Hi, this is Trisha from Lemon Paper Lab. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to create a marble texture in Photoshop. If you would like the design files for this tutorial, uh, be sure to uh, check out my Patreon page where I upload all of the uh, design files for um, all of my tutorials here on YouTube. If you'd like to uh, support this channel, go ahead and check that out and I will leave a link to uh, my Patreon page in the description below. Let's go ahead and create a new file. For this document, I'm gonna use the dimension of 1024 pixels by 1024 pixels. Why I am using this document size is because we are going to use the clouds feature in Photoshop. And when you use the clouds filter, if you use a document that is a power of two, then it will automatically be seamless. Just pulling up Google here. If you search for a uh, power of two table, you can see uh, the various sizes that would be considered a power of two. So I've chosen uh, this size here, uh, 1024. So you can choose one of these values or you could take say this value and double it by two or double it by three and that will still create a seamless document. So just keep that in mind when using the clouds filter in Photoshop that if you start your document with uh, something that is the power of two or a multiple of the power of two, then you will automatically get a seamless repeat. Here under resolution, I'm going to go 300 pixels per inch. Color mode is RGB color. And then under background contents, I'm going to set it as white. And then we'll go ahead and click on create. Uh, before we begin, I'm just going to hit D on the keyboard to uh, get my default colors because we are going to use the clouds filter, which uh, makes use of your foreground and background color. So I'm going to go ahead and go to filter, render, and we are going to use clouds. You'll, you'll also notice there's a filter called difference clouds. The difference between these two, so with clouds, you could have a transparent layer currently and this filter would work. If you had a transparent layer currently, difference clouds would not work because it requires that there be color within your current layer. So. That's the main difference between these. Clouds will work with a transparent layer. Difference cloud requires a layer to have color already. So we're gonna select clouds for this step and you'll get this kind of cloudy filter look. I'm gonna go ahead and double click on this layer just so we can unlock it. And then let's go ahead and create a, another layer here. And then we are going to do the same thing, filter, render, clouds. Uh, what you'll notice here at the top is that it says clouds. This is kind of like a shortcut click for your last use filter. You could just click on this here and it will repeat the step. What you'll notice is it is different but between the two layers. Uh, the clouds filter will be different every time you use it. Uh, with this top layer selected, what we're going to do next is we're going to go to filter render and then this time we are going to select difference clouds and that will give us a little bit more of this grainy effect we'll go ahead and do uh, that same thing for our bottom layer so we're going to go to filter we can select that shortcut here again difference clouds and it will create that effect here now that we've applied difference clouds to both layers let's go ahead and select our top layer again and we are going to go to Image, Adjustments, and select Levels. Here at the bottom, you'll notice our three little pointers. The furthest one left represents our shadows. This one in the middle is our midtones, and this one on the right is our highlights. So with our highlight pointer, I'm going to uh, drag it to the left until we get to the start of the curve. And with this midpoint, I'm going to drag it to the left to where it's right up next to our shadows. And that just really brightens the look of our image here. We'll go ahead and click on OK. And then let's do the same thing with our bottom layer. Uh, for this time, I'm gonna use my keyboard shortcut key, which is Command L, which will bring up the levels panel here. And again, we're gonna slide that highlights here to the left 
and then uh, we'll bring this one to the bottom. We're not really seeing any change because we're acting on the bottom layer here, um, but you can see the differences happening in our icon here. And then let's go ahead and click on OK there. So we have our two layers. If we click off this top one, we can see the bottom one there. So with this top layer, we are going to change the blending mode. So clicking here at normal, hitting that drop down, I'm going to change it to soft light. And what that does is it allows the two layers to start to interact with each other. Selecting the bottom layer here, let's go ahead and create a duplicate of this layer. So I'm going to go Command or Control J to create a duplicate. With this metal layer, I'm going to change the blend mode to screen. So we'll select screen here, and then I'm going to rotate this layer. So I'm going to go to edit, transform, and then let's go ahead and rotate it 90 degrees. That way it gives us a different uh, look here. And now we have our marble textured. Uh, let's go ahead and just define this as a pattern. To save this as a pattern, you're going to go to Edit, Define Pattern. You can give uh, your pattern a name. And then just go ahead and click on OK. Here in the Patterns panel, I can see my newly created pattern. If you do not see your Patterns window, just go to Window and select Patterns here. Let's go ahead and test this out in a new document. So we'll go File, New. At uh, this time, I'm going to use the dimensions of digital scrapbook paper, which is 3,600 pixels by 3,600 pixels. We'll just go ahead and create. And then I'm going to bring up a pattern adjustment layer here. And then just for my patterns panel, I'll select my newly created pattern. As you can see, it is a seamless pattern. You can always click on the pattern fill layer and then from here you can adjust your scale. You can even move your uh, pattern around here. If you want to get back to the original, just click to snap to origin. We'll just go ahead and click on OK here. Jumping back into uh, my original document here, let's go ahead and change the color of this pattern. And there are uh, three main ways you can do that. So let's click on this first layer here and we are going to add a adjustment layer. So I'm gonna scroll down all the way down until you select gradient map. Here in my properties panel, you can see it has the details for a gradient map. And I'm just going to uh, double click here from here, you can select your color. So if you click on this icon here, you can choose to uh, select a color. So maybe we want to try a blue. So you'll select a darker color here, and then you have the option to uh, select a lighter color here. So if we want to get it more back to a white, we can go FFF, and you can see uh, that color there. And then we'll just go ahead and click on OK. So that's one option uh, to change your color. The next option, we are going to do a hue saturation adjustment layer. So we'll select hue saturation here under properties. Uh, to get it to color, you want to make sure you check colorize here. And then uh, you can play with the hue and saturation slider. So if you want it more intense, you can bring up the saturation here. And then with hue, you can change the overall color that you have for the pattern here. So that's a, another option. And then there is one more option here. The next option is to use a color fill layer. So let's select a solid color adjustment layer. So this is going to be the color of the veining. So let's try maybe a reddish orange look. So we'll select that dark color there. For this layer, we are going to change the blending mode to screen. And you can see that it has adjusted the color of our veins. And then let's do a one more solid color adjustment layer. This time we are going to go for a lighter color here. Let's do closer to white and then we'll select OK. In this case, we are going to select a blending mode of multiply and you can see it has affected the overall color. You can always double click on your color layer again to uh, change uh, the color here. So if we want it a little bit more white and then you can adjust this as well to change the overall color if you want it a little bit lighter there.
let's go ahead and group these two layers, Commander Control G. And then we can turn off that one and then we can bring up our hue saturation to see uh, that color effect and then we can also see how the gradient map effect was. So those are just three different ways uh, that you can adjust the color of your marble texture. Thank you for watching this video on how to create a marble texture in Photoshop. Again, if you want access to all the design files for my tutorials, then you can join me over on Patreon. I will leave a link to it in the description below. Thank you for the support. It helps me to keep making these tutorials. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment below. Be sure to check out my other tutorials on how to create patterns in Photoshop. This is Trisha from Lemon Paper Lab. See you next time.